I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNA video practice exam, where today the topic is a little bit of everything. Most of my other video practice exams focus on one topic at a time, and that's an important part of your study, but of course the exam's going to mix things up for you a little bit. So that's what I've done here, some different topics, uh, maybe for some angles that you haven't looked at yet, and of course I'll go through the 10 questions first kind of quickly, so if you need to pause the video on occasion, that's perfectly fine, take a few extra seconds, but not too long, because we have to get used to that for the exam. And also at the end we'll go through the 10 questions and the answers. And let's go ahead and dive in here with question one. We have two kinds of pings available to us, regular and extended. Which one or ones can you successfully run from user exec mode? I'm kind of used to the regular ping, but there's an extended ping that's very helpful as well. So let's move on to question two. A short answer here. What is the decimal equivalent of the hex value 4a? We'll move on to the third question. When you're subnetting, the actual process of that, you're borrowing something. Exactly what are you borrowing? Network bits, host bits, subnet bits, or bits that match the and or equation. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Which of these four commands would require a numeric value to follow in the same line? So if you hit enter after you type in router rip, router EIGRP, router OSPF, or router static, which ones would say this is an incomplete command? Okay, let's move to the next question. If you've got a PPP or HDLC encapsulation mismatch and the interface is open, which one of these four outputs will you likely see in the show interface command output here, assuming that it is serial zero? Are you going to see up and up, administratively down and down, down and down, or up and down? We'll move on to the next question. Debugging which of the following is going to result in you seeing a series of challenges and responses? CHAP, PAP, both, or neither? We'll move on to the next question. Where will you find a Cisco router's startup configuration file? Got to know about all these four and what's in them for your CCNA exam, definitely. So where would I find the startup config file? Next question, which of the following statements describes EIGRP? And as always, it can be more than one in my video practice exams. Cisco proprietary uses ASs, strictly linked state, strictly distance vector. Let's move on to the next question. Which of the following requires a Cisco router to be reloaded or some other kind of reset for the change or command to take place? Changing the OSPF RID, changing the configuration register, naming the router with the hostname command, and enabling the password encryption service. And the final question, slow convergence is an issue with which of these routing protocols? RIP, static, EIGRP, and OSPF. All right, let's go back and take a look at the answers here. In just a moment, I want to remind you that we've got well over 275 free Cisco tutorials on the website now at www.thebryantadvantage.com. Some other free resources that you should know about. We've got free frame relay and ether channel webinars. We've also got uh, wireless voice and um, security webinars coming up, as well as some live practice exams. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Head out to that page, ccnawebinars.htm at the Bryant Advantage. Registration is absolutely free. You don't need a headset, you don't need a microphone, just 45 minutes of your time and a desire to get certified. Also, I've got a blog out where I post Cisco practice exam questions daily for the CCNA and the CCNP exams and wireless voice and security as well. And you're welcome to come out there at the bryantadvantage.blogspot.com. So let's go through these 10 questions and take a look at our answers. When it comes to these pings, the only one that you can run from user exec is the basic one, the regular ping. If you want to run an extended ping, you do need to be in enable mode because you can send a lot of ping packets that way, a lot of different pings. Uh, it's not just a regular five packet ICMP ping. So you will need to be in privileged exec or enable mode to run the extended one. 
the decimal equivalent of the hex value 4a, what we have here then in hex is 4 units of 16 and 10 units of 1. So first you would simply say what is 4 times 16 and that is 64. A in hex is 10 so you're looking at 74 here overall again 4 units of 16 and 10 units of 1. When you're subnetting you are borrowing host bits. You never borrow network bits and the bits that you are borrowing are becoming your subnet bits but you're not borrowing subnet bits to begin with. It sounds like I'm being a little nitpicking there but I'm really not because that's an important concept with subnetting is that you're always borrowing host bits. Well, let's move on here. Which one of these would require a numeric value to follow in the same line? Well router RIP does not. Router EIGRP does. It requires an AS number. Router OSPF will require you to put a process number there and there is no such command as router static. We use the IP route command to create static routes. Classic question here in a classic situation in home labs and production environments as well on occasion. If you've got an encapsulation mismatch and the interface is open, it's physically fine but logically there's a problem and when that happens it's going to be up and down. Serial zero is up, line protocol is down. If you debug CHAP, you will see a series of challenges and responses, hopefully successful responses. If you debug PAP, you won't see actual challenges because it's only CHAP that has the challenges and responses. You'll find a startup configuration file in NVRAM, our non-volatile RAM, and that's the RAM, of course, where the contents are not lost on a reload. EIGRP is a Cisco proprietary protocol and it uses autonomous systems to logically group the routers. It is not strictly link state or distance vector. Little, not really tricky here, but you know, most things we do in a Cisco router do not require any kind of reload or reset. But changing the OSPF RID will require you to, to either reload the router or clear your OSPF processes, which in turn brings all of your adjacencies down. So it's not something we do in the middle of the workday. Also, changing the configuration register does require a reload. Naming the router certainly does not, and neither does enabling the password encryption service. And then finally, slow convergence is an issue with RIP. Static routing is not really a routing protocol, but it doesn't really have slow convergence. RIP, uh, if you've been to any of my webinars or online courses, you know all about the slow convergence of RIP. EIGRP and OSPF both converge very quickly, which is why we like to use them whenever we can. Hope you enjoyed today's practice exam. Definitely invite you out to the website, tutorials, videos, practice exams, a series of free webinars going on as well, and then the blog for daily practice exam questions. Again, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to take this exam. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.